Gentlemen, thank you so much for having honored our invitation. A warm welcome to both of you. Thank, thank you. you. Let me begin with you, Major General Jimmy Wesley, because you are Minister for Security, and what happens in our region, of course, is a concern for Uganda. On Sunday, tens of thousands of Congolese refugees were pouring into the southwestern district of Kisoro, running away from the rebel fire or whatever it was in eastern Congo. What is the latest in Kisoro, and what is the latest of the security situation on our border? The security situation is back to normal and most of the refugees have returned back to their country, so the situation is returning to normal. Returning to normal, but you have been accused by a neighboring country for having been the launch pad for the attack in Eastern Congo by the so-called M23 rebels. And when a neighboring state accuses you, especially a former ally who understands your modus operandi, then that is something to ponder about. It's absolutely not true, of course. Uh, M23 was not in Uganda, and uh, <coughs> did not uh, attack from Uganda. It was in DRC Congo. So those allegations are baseless. I remember the last time M23 tried to fight the government of Congo, and they failed. They retreated towards Uganda, didn't they? No. Uh, what is true is that uh, some people came as refugees who used to be in M23. And as you know, Uganda is a, a, is a receiving country of refugees, and we cannot discriminate. Those and where, are where are these some people? In the refugee camps. I know the refugee settlements of Uganda are not like other refugee camps of in other parts of the world, because mm. they almost live like any other Ugandan. I've been to Ruchinga, I've been to Nakivali, I've been to Kiriandongo. Are you sure that they cannot use Uganda as a launch pad? And they I'm saying this because of a history of Uganda. When RPA decided to attack Rwanda, they came from Uganda. In fact, they came from the NRA uh, ranks and file and in big number. Yes. When SPLA was fighting the government in Sudan, sometimes it would be fought uh, up to northern Uganda, and Uganda was the rare base. So you have a history of actually supporting not people who get into other countries. Not at all. Not at all. Uganda has a, a refugee policy, which is good for Africans, but it does not allow them to organize against the country of origin. What happened uh, with the RPF was not from refugee camps. N on the contrary, they actually uh, deserted our army, the people who went back. But they, uh, once you are a refugee, you are in a refugee camp, Uganda works with the UNHCR to make sure that you are looked after very well, but you abide by the laws of Uganda and the international laws. What has been intriguing me, uh, Honorable Major General Jim Wazi, is the understanding that whenever there's a problem in Eastern Congo, in the areas of South Kivu, North Kivu, in Irushuru, Nirunyonyi, Beni, Obutembo, wherever it is, hmm. it appears, despite matters of sovereignty, that to be a headache for Kampala than it should be a headache for Kinshasa because of proximity. Yeah, because Uganda respects international law and cannot cross borders and follow uh, the rebels who spring from there and come and cause insecurity, we respect the laws. That's why it becomes a headache. We know ADF is best in the DRC Congo, but we cannot go there. But you appreciate the fact that uh, whatever is happening in Eastern Congo is more problematic for Kampala than it is for Kinshasa? It is problematic for both of us. Because, of course, it's a responsibility of Kinshasa, of the DRC, but it affects us, so it's our concern. But we have to deal with them through the government of uh, DRC Congo. So if it wasn't matters of sovereignty as a soldier and a general that, do you sometimes feel, you know, maybe your hands are itching to go for a preemptive strike? Always. Always. If we were allowed, we would follow them and uh, eliminate them like we have done with all the rebels inside the country. We did with Konyi, and we followed Konyi, as you know, when we were allowed to do so and chased him to very far 
from here. That's why he's no longer, uh, you know, of any impact in Uganda. So even ADF, we are talking to the government in Kinshasa, and God willing, we'll deal with them. Honorable Ibrahim Semo Uganda, I, I want to speak to you not only as a member of parliament, but also as somebody whom at one point used to work in the newsroom like this one. And I remember you writing about stories in the Congo and the security situation in the Great Lakes region. We see continuous volatility in that region. What is causing that and what could be the solution to end this volatility? <coughs> part, part of the problem is hysterical. And I may not want to go back to 1885, uh, but for those who are interacting with this problem for the first time, they need to understand that uh, <coughs> there are Tusi in DRC who came at one time from Rwanda, settled at a place called Mulenge, and later they, they, they called themselves Banyamulenge, the people of Mulenge. I think on more than three occasions, Congo has been defining and redefining who their citizens are. And on more than three occasions, denouncing the Tusi, the Banyamulenge as part of Congo. So the, the I think around 19, uh, <coughs> um, 91, when you had the end of the Cold War, trouble started with the, those two seas feeling insecure having been denounced. So they, because Kabila, I mean, uh, Mobutu was also collapsing after the, uh, the Cold War. He had lost the support of the Americans. Um, but even the other groups other than Mobutu didn't like them. So the war that took us to Congo um, 98, I think 97 is when we removed the Mobutu. Our participation is known that uh, we like fighting wars that sometimes are not ours. These jets for which the president raided the reserves and boat, the only war they have ever fought was in, in, in South Sudan, preventing a collapse of the government there. So therefore we, we, we went to Congo, fought, participated in the removal, but we took advantage of these two seas who had been denounced. At one time, by the way, there was a resolution by parliament in Congo chasing Rwandese, chasing Ugandans, and chasing uh, these two seas. But if you may so uh, the pause there, <coughs> the Banyamulenge yeah. have actually lived in Congo even before the establishment of Congo as a state. <laughs> these yes. are just the, what they, sh they share yes, the same culture. But, but the, before, the before Congo became a state, yes. the Banyamulenge lived on that Mulenge at the, at the And they were they are as Congolese as the other Congolese. I am not the one denouncing them. I have told you on more than three what, what, what I wanted even to say is that they did, not, they did not migrate like recently. Even, no. even, these were there even the creation of Congo as a even, state. Even by, by parliament itself, saying these people, because you see, when they are, the first time they are defining who Congolese are, they said they will go for the uh, original tribes in Congo. So if you are not part of them and they can trace your history, whether they have lived there, when they trace their history, they say they are not part of them. I thought that Bakaburan was. Let me, let me tell you, oh. people who speak my language, mm. yes. which is Runyakitara or Rutoro to be specific, are many more in Congo than they are in Uganda, and they are called the Hema, the other side. Yeah, I, I am not the one. That no, I'm, I'm, just <laughs> trying to, I'm just trying to explain that. Yes. <laughs> it can't be a thing. So, coming, coming to mm -hmm. the <laughs> problems, and I gave that historical background for a reason. Um, Rore Kabira, Bizar, who was also fighting for his own reasons. I think he was with President Museveni in Dal Salaam at one time. So the Uganda went, and at that time we were, we were still, because Rwanda, we had just helped uh, people, you know, most cause deserters. They can't be deserters, we organized them. President Kagame was in America attending a course when Rue Jema and, and the, 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 the doctor in Ghana, in Ghana yes, killed themselves, we are the one who facilitated Kagame to return from America, transported him up to Congo. At one time, by the way, Sari was there. 
General Tunyefuza was the one smoking meat in, in, in Zimbabwe. So these, these are not deserters. You can tell maybe children, but those of us who are adults, you are the ones who organized to go and invade Rwanda. In fact, for me, I've said many times. I if hope I you I have if evidence if I ever, If I ever... <coughs> If, if I ever hold anyone responsible for part of what happened in Rwanda, these NRA gorillas are part of the So, so, so you're, you're saying so it's the, the problem is historical? Historical. Uh, so now. Mm, historical in such a way mm -hmm. that uh, these people who are being denounced in, in, in Congo are vulnerable, but they occupy an area near Uganda and partly near Rwanda. Uh, because the, two, the, the Hutus, after losing in 1994, also migrated to Congo. So Rwanda has a, a almost now a permanent interest in Congo. At one time, they would want the Banyamulenge to help them against the Hutus who are there. So they, they want them to act as a buffer. Also, Uganda, for the points he made, because of the presence of ADF, but at one time, we also wanted to establish a government that is more friendly, because after we took Kabira to Kinshasa, we were removing him. Reason, he turned out not to be as friendly as we had thought. Maybe one of the things we need to examine is the DNA of these NRA gorillas. You go and support RPF takeover power in, in, in Rwanda, and you are fighting with them later. You go and help Kabira take over power in Kinshasa, and you are fighting to remove him. So we need to test your DNA to find out why do you turn against, because even internally here, you've turned against people who are, help, who are helping you, even in the world. Everybody is crying. Your own contemporaries, with whom, uh, uh, your own contemporaries with whom you are in the world, one by one are deserting you. So there must be something wrong with your DNA. You take so, a government so to Rwanda, no, no, okay, you, okay, you but turn uh, against it. You right. take a government to Congo, but you turn against it. So... We yeah. are a factor in all these so, conflicts. Uh, okay. Mr. Kamara, this is how I want to drive the, the no, discussion. No, no, but uh, he, he has said so many things which he must substantiate. And I, was, I came here okay. to say many things. The, 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 you said list, many things. I didn't I come here. I listened one to at you. Time. I listened to you. Learn how to listen. You okay. are not the one to teach one, me how one to listen. One at a time, honorable. You don't moderate Mujer. the program. One you ask for the opportunity yes. to we we It is yes. absolutely yes. wrong to interpret the events in Congo on the ethnic grounds. That's number one. Dibanyamulenge, as you said rightly, have always lived in DRC Congo. They were not organized to go there by anyone. Two, it is wrong for Honorable Semuju to say that NRA organized RPF to go under attack. It is on record that they deserted and went to Rwanda and they have never come back. They were never allowed to come back, actually. Therefore, it's wrong for him to say that uh, so-and-so organized the Tinyafuza roasted beef. This is uh, completely wrong, unfounded, and he should substantiate it with okay. facts or okay. evidence. I, I think uh, it is your word against his, and we cannot do much because this is what you state, this is what he state. Can we leave that and move to another topic? Because y there's no way how you're going to bring evidence here. There's no way you're going to say this evidence even is not even right. Even if it's that broad. Yes. So no, and, and, and I'm saying, look, because, look, you, 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 made this, you, 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 you have made an allegation. It's not an allegation, it is a fact. It's a lie. That you see, you have an army and part of your army begin meetings, collect firearms, your own firearms, and then they go to fight another country and you don't know and you are in security. You are in charge of Uganda's security. Not one, not two, not one thousand, but thousands Let of me people ask you. organize themselves, carry guns, are, are, are not you, guns are, they are bought, but Ugandan guns. And for you, security okay. people, you don't you know. know. Now, as far as that is concerned right now, there could have been some historical challenges we faced. But as we are right now, in Congo, there's a United Nations force that has been there for 20 years. 20 years. And I'm told spending about a billion dollars a year. Part of it is securing the Congo. You have institutions, the AU, you have institutions, commercial, you have institutions, the East African, uh, East African uh, partner states. Why is it that with the money and the institutions we have, um, we cannot have peace in the Great Lakes region? Mr. Kamara, 
I came here to discuss matters of security in Uganda. And that's what we're talking about. I am because not a minister of security for Great Lakes region. Okay? Do you, so, do therefore, you I am not uh, in position to answer for DRC Congo or for that matter for any other country mm -hmm. except Uganda. You appreciate that what happened yes. in the region has an impact on Uganda's yes, peace and yes. stability? Yes, absolutely. And so, as, as means of security, if it has a, a, a bearing for Uganda, yes. then how can you avoid as a means of security talk I about the issue? I have told you already that our concern is about ADF and I have talked about it, and I have told you that we are in contact with the government in Kinshasa, DRC, and that's enough. But I cannot talk about what happens I in the DRC Congo. Yes, it's I not my responsibility. Yes, it is not. I, and I was only trying to uh, bring your interest in as far as Uganda's, the, 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 the results of what happened there, how they impact. Because just yesterday you had tens of thousands of refugees. Yes, which I Even answer. now you are the host of the biggest refugee community in Africa or even the third in the world. Right. So because of what happens across. Right. So there's no way Which I responded to fairly well, so I think. Well, you... I did. You have an enemy in the name of ADF. Yes. And it is alleged that is was again ADF in Komamboga the other day, and ADF on the massacre road. Yes, they spring from there, they cut out uh, uh, recruitment, they, some, they, they create cells here in some areas, they have, they have some sympathizers, and so on, but we are on top of the situation, we have arrested most of them, we have catch, captured their improvised uh, explosive devices, and so on. And we know they come from Congo, but I have told you we are in contact with Who the government. Who is their quartermaster? Wh what do you mean? Who is giving them these things? Who is giving them support in the, in, in the Congo? Wouldn't you be interested in knowing yes. who is this man giving them their ration? Even if I knew, I don't have to say it here in front of the camera, but we know. And that's why we are making arrests, and the people arrested are giving us very useful information. And that's why we are, we are apprehending all the involved people. The person who died and, the one and those who were injured, I suppose, were in your constituency, right? No, they, no, were not. they are not. But in the neighboring uh, constituency, yeah. as a member of parliament representing that area closer to where the bombs uh, happened, I mean, how are you handling it as a local leader? And uh, what information do you get in terms of what really happened? You see, the, the <coughs> part of the trouble that we have in Uganda is that people who run the state think it is their property. They think this is theirs, <coughs> and that's why he speaks the way he speaks. They don't think they owe an explanation, and they need to speak to us and explain details, of, especially those of us who are elected leaders. So you only hear them talk. They don't hold meetings. I'm not, I, I'm not part of Komamboga, that is Kawempe North. But I know that they will not go and speak to elected leaders there. They think everybody is a subject. So we have rulers who, whose business it is to run Uganda. You can put them to task to ask to answer the these questions <coughs> at, at on the floor of the house where you, where you sit. Do they answer them? Did you ask them? But we have asked them several before. What did you ask? What haven't we asked? You know what happened this week? You had the minister responsible for science and technology ordered by parliament to come and answer. Did she answer? There are a few ministers who answer, but there are those who think they are above everybody, so they can't answer. People like him, they think they are bigger than the institution of parliament. I don't answer. You answer, as you answer the way you like, and you know it. So I answer. No, you, you don't answer the If I ask you a question, you answer to my satisfaction. Why should I answer the way you want? But let, me, but let me go <laughs> back to the subject, because I am the one asking. No. You don't set the question. So if I ask a question, you answer. No, I answer satisfaction. to the country. But the point okay. is... You. Yes. <coughs> you deal with the executive on matters of security. They come to parliament. You are a senior member of parliament. There are some of you them, by them the way, who, are, who yes. are civil. And they will, they will make an attempt to explain. But there are those who look down MPs who think they are, uh, they look at them as children. Those ones, uh, so, but we don't care. Their time will also come and they will go like the others have. But the most serious issues of DRC, and, 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 and I'm really surprised that a minister responsible for security says he's limited to Uganda. 
yet the problem is, is explaining are also problems originating from the neighbors. But we have also participated and it is on record. I remember one time the Honorable Kategaya came to Parliament and explained why they were supporting Garang and his group fighting in Sudan. He actually spoke, he, he, he did not hide like him, that uh, not, as outside hide. Uganda, not, not as outside Uganda. If they are affecting Uganda, they actually become domestic matters. They are no longer matters beyond the borders. So the <coughs> issues of the Great Lakes, at one time we played a positive part, at another time we played a negative part. I keep asking myself, the first time we entered the Congo, what is it really that took us to Congo? Because if we went for rebels who are in South Kivu and North Kivu and the Ituri around Uganda and borders, and you are in Kinshasa, not only in Kinshasa, a few months later you are fighting with Rwanda, leading to the death of hundreds of UPDF soldiers. That's how you get blamed, even when you are not, you shouldn't be blamed. So this latest uh, fighting. Uh, that led to the refugees coming into Uganda. You had another country are choosing Uganda. That country is full of allies, people who are occupying very high offices in our security here, but they are choosing Uganda. Who am I not to believe? If the Ugandan ministers are speaking like him, they don't want to give information. Who am I not to believe? So, so now, so we, therefore, so now, we will honorable mm -hmm. Simuju, so we find ourselves in this region. As a leader at your level and him, what needs to be done? Um, first of all, the democracy in these areas is one of the reasons you have these unending conflicts. And please don't get tired when I, I bring history. Mubut Seseko was in charge of Congo for 30 years. He personalized that country, undermined the institutions, and when he collapsed, that's why you don't have security in many parts of Congo, including the eastern that neighbors Uganda and Rwanda and Burundi. Because you are the person who for 30 years was building a personal rule. So we need institutions <coughs> that are working we, at the robust. We, we need institutions. Because if you had security in Congo, if you had government present infrastructure, Congo, almost the, the in terms of you know, the richest country on earth, you wouldn't be having rebels operating. At one time, General Aronda came and briefed us. I was on the committee on, on, on defense. And he said ADF at that time was controlling an area bigger than Uganda. Because Congo is such a huge country that if you, you don't have the presence of government, you're going to be in trouble. Yes, but so we need, what, we need, what do we, we need, need to do? We need democratic institutions <laughs> working. Because part of the Congo, part of their problem has also been ethnic which he doesn't want to believe. People feeling that there are certain groups that are benefiting um, and sidelining others. In fact, that's what led to the, the Banyamurenge rebellion, people going to fight uh, to, to, to remove Mobutu. They went there because they felt segregated. In Uganda, do you have conditions that uh, will cause that problems and you must deal with them in Sudan? In Ethiopia, same problems. You had the, 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 the Tigrians controlling Ethiopia for okay. decades. What so therefore, until, done, until eh? you built democratic institutions that are accountable to citizens, and you don't have uh, individuals who run these countries as personal enterprises, then you'll have peace in the Great Lakes region. If you build democratic institutions... What needs to be done? Yeah, I mean, Ask he, me the same well, question. He, he just said building democratic institutions, even though he <laughs> passed a very long whatever, building robust democratic institutions that can hold the country together hmm. would be perhaps one way that could save the situation in most of these countries. Hmm. Are there conditions in the Congo, uh, perhaps uh, are the same conditions we have in Uganda? Yes, uh, before I answer that question, hmm. I want to be very clear mm. that uh, the problem we have with uh, coming from Eastern Congo, I have not stopped talking about it. It is ADF and now it is Islamic State combined and that's the problem we are dealing with, not only as Uganda but as a region 
and as an international community. Because uh, the ADF is working with the Islamic State for Central African province, which covers all these countries in the Great Lakes region and beyond to Mozambique and so on. So what needs to be done is to address, to work together on that security matter to deal with that problem. And that is what is going to help Uganda to deal with ADF. As I said, we are working with the DRC Congo to solve that problem. So you have young so men <laughs> in Uganda yes. who are so angry, yes. have reached a level of going to be so radical that they will wear a bomb to go and explode themselves. What radicalizes young people that level? Indoctrination. Young people are taken from here, recruited, actually lied to that they are going to get jobs, good jobs. When they get there, they are radicalized, they are forced, those who want to escape are killed, those who manage to escape come and report back, and we have several of them. But that's how they are taken. So they are the conditions uh, of young people leaving their country is because they find this country, there's nothing in it for them. No, it's not, uh, it's not uh, everybody. There are a few of them who go. And I'm telling you that many of them who go actually regret why they have gone. And many come, try but to come back. But some have gone, Honorable Jim Mwesi, because they are frustrated that the country they call theirs and the government that's supposed to serve them is not. No, that's not true. What we have, the evidence we have, because we have people, I've told you, the people we arrest, even those we arrest having those devices, those improvised things like the one who was uh, going to attack a General Lokechi's uh, burial. They talk, they tell us, that's evidence. So I don't know what you are saying, whether you have evidence. I know that you have Ugandans whom you have that captured. you have evidence? I, I know that you have said you have Ugandans you have captured yes. who are ready to die and I'm, th I'm thinking by the time they reach that level mm. then the degree of dissatisfaction and the degree of, of you know you know anger that they have yeah. has hit the roof mm. and I know that mm. you're saying they leave Uganda looking for opportunities because Uganda is not working for them. Because this is what they have told me. They have told us. That's what I'm telling you. Major General Jim Mwesi and Honorable mm. Ibrahim Samoju. We're going to take a break and and this show will be right back. Welcome back. You're watching On The Spot. My name is Patrick Amara. My guests tonight are Honorable Ibrahim Samoju and Honorable Major General Jim Mwesi. We're talking about the security situation in our country that is also related to what is happening in the neighborhood, in the Great Lakes region. So as far as we are concerned, a, a few weeks back, every Ugandan was, you know, walking cautiously, thinking anytime maybe it could be a bomb exploding there because of what we have seen. C can we say that now you are on top of the situation, there are no more, you know, terror cells, sleeper cells in Kampala that could wreak havoc to us? Well, I can tell you that the security in the country is stable. I cannot say that there are no terror cells or sleeper cells. They may be there, but they cannot act. I cannot terrorize the population because we have the capacity, we have the information of most of them, we have arrested many of them, we, 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 we are following every step they are making and therefore I don't think they can cause terror in the country. But they slipped through and caused havoc in Komamboga and slipped through and almost caused total havoc in, on the road to, to, to Bushen. How did that happen? Uh, well, the one in uh, Komamboga, yes, it, uh, it was detonated and it killed a person uh, or two. The one in, uh, in Fiji, I think, destroyed himself, either accidentally or otherwise. But 
what I'm saying, we have captured most of these items before they, 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 they connect them to cause, to make a bomb. So many, many of so them. So these are people who have what you have called improvised explosive devices, mm. which means we have Ugandans living among us ourselves in their homes. They are able to make these IEDs, which IEDs can kill. Really, are you on top of the situation? If people can just, um, you know, bring, they have the mind, they have the skill, they have their time, they can be in their homes and manufacture bombs. What mm. if they do it in mass? No, uh, that's why they can't do it in mass, because we have uh, detected and uh, arrested more people than those who have connected them and managed to make a bomb. That's what it means to be on top of the situation, is to infiltrate them. Beco why? Because they are not interested, many of them. They are misinformed. So when that happens, so many people know that they have been drawn into something they are not interested in. That's why even during recruitment, they don't tell them that they are going to uh, make them uh, terrorists. They tell them that you are going to get jobs. And then they end up forcing them, indoctrinating them, and some of them fall prey, others refuse. But those who come, they think that they are going to succeed. When they fail and they are captured, then they disclose all about all these cells they are trying to make in different places, and then we move ahead of them and uh, make the arrests before uh, they can make the attack. Honorable Samuju, there has been a sense of paranoia among Ugandans that anything could happen. He's a minister of security, he's a major general in the army, or retired, I suppose, and uh, well, yes. he's a man with a yeah. background of intelligence. So when he says we're on top of the situation, he's your colleague in parliament, do you believe? I participate in appropriating money for the security sector. And they take the biggest chunk of, of, of our budget. So therefore, <coughs> uh, I, I, want, I don't want to be reassured by words. I want, I want to see the actions. If you want to deal, and I'm not, I don't want to claim to be an expert, but I think we will need to deal with conditions driving people into rebellion. Because I have heard the president speak, each time he's going to table a list of how many rebel groups he has suppressed, he has defeated. I want someone to to be proud of suppressing conditions that are leading people to rebellion, not suppressing those who are going to rebellion. Because if Obote had, Obote had succeeded, maybe he wouldn't be a general. He was also hunting you down like you're hunting down all the rebel groups. So what this country should be discussing are the conditions driving people into rebellion. The ones that go there for ideological, religious reasons are very difficult to deal with. But the ones that go there out of option, maybe like you did yourself, those ones we need to find a solution as a country. Because not every country is facing the same situation like we do here. And, and that's the conversation that I want to hear government uh, engaged in. Not just something that this one we have finished, we are now in charge. Because see, every life that you lose, um, there are people who are crying because they have lost a dear one and they don't have to be in their thousands. We need to deal with conditions, uh, uh, but they will, never, they will never want to deal with the conditions. I was in Nijuba when government was speaking to Konye. Um, uh, I spent there nearly two, three weeks. And there are many, many things that uh, the LRA representatives there said that anyone else in Uganda will say. The dominance uh, of Uganda by the historicals who think they came here and captured power and Uganda became their, their country. Uh, almost everybody else is on their mercy. I saw the president speaking yesterday that uh, those MPs, uh, I, I will go for them. So MPs are doing their work, you want to go for them. I think 
general gym always thinks he's a, he's a more shareholder, he's a bigger shareholder in Uganda than myself or any other person. Until we've tackled that, for every Ugandan to feel that he's part of Uganda, then all of us will be behind you or will be behind whoever will be in charge of security. But they are, you see, people can celebrate when their own country is on fire. You've seen children uh, burning their own library. They are the consumers of the content there. But the conditions in schools will drive them to go and burn their own library. It, it's stupid, but it happens. And that's what you need to deal with if you are a school. So, you, know, you, don't, you don't look at many strikes that you have suppressed. Senior six, they are striking. Those ones, I finished them. Senior four, I finished them. Look at the conditions and deal with them. Don't deal with people who are reacting. Okay, the point, point made and point taken. <laughs> General, General Moise, if, if I may, uh, I think, if I may interpret what uh, the Honorable Ibrahim is saying, the very condition that made you risk your lives and go to the bush in the, eight, in the early 80s, are the same condition right now that actually Ugandans can turn against you and even become so suicidal? Before I answer that question, I want to deal with what uh, Honorable Simbiju has said, that uh, we must deal with conditions that force people to go into these activities. The thing yes, mm -hmm. but I have already said that these people are duped, are duped, they are fooled, they are tricked into joining. There are no conditions that force them to go. They are tricked, they go, when they get there, they regret. And the many of them who managed to escape, they regret. So there are no conditions, unless Honorable Semuju has information how people are recruited, who are going. I don't know, maybe he could assist us. But as I know, there are no conditions that force people to go. People are not interested in going. In fact, they are tricked in order to go. And the reasons for going, as I have said, ADF, ISIS have a different agenda, which is not a topic for discussion now. So there are not conditions here that take people into rebellion, but they are, a, a, they are foreign, and they are taken. So, if, so, if you look at what was happening in Masaka a yeah. couple of weeks back, where they were killing every day, you'd wonder if there are no conditions. If you see what happened in November 2020, mm. when you know Kampala became you, you know ungovernable, you're shooting soldiers were shooting to kill mm. on the streets and uh, mayhem anarchy on the street. I think you can think the the conditions are right. No, no, no. The the no, it, last, it, it, last, it, takes just, it last can only take just an hour last, for Kampala yes. to, to, to rise in two cases. Oh, yes, yes. This, this was, uh, of course, during elections, and there were heated uh, sentiments, and uh, we know the riots that took place, and that those killings, those deaths, occurred during that fracas, as you know. But this is not what we are talking you know, about. You know, Jim Wezi, Honorable Jim Wezi, what I have seen in our country, and especially in Kampala, mm. it, it, it only, we are like 10 minutes away from total collapse all the time. If something happens in downtown, they could tell us, you know what, you can't cross the Kuseka. You cannot go to, <laughs> to Kuruma. Yes, those I have seen that. Yeah, that's, those situations happen, but of course Kampala is not so, Uganda. So we, s we seem to be in perpetual vulnerability. No, no, we, when, but you know what, uh, we don't want to go into those details. Those riots happened because uh, Chagulani had been arrested. That's what happened. People decided to go on the streets, burn tires and, uh, and so on, and uh, cause mayhem, and there was uh, th th that chaos. But it ended. And the arrests were made, people are in court. The massacre incidents you are talking about, of course, we know about them. Arrests have been made, they are in court, as you know. We can't. Uh, I don't know, I say don't know whether you have observed that uh. see, people seem to be, you know, angry, you know, emotionally charged. You just need, uh, you know, 
if you run out of luck and you hit a border border person, maybe injure him or somehow, or maybe try to, uh, to cause damage to his border border, that could mean the end of your life. On the street of Kampala, you would be stoned to death, and yes. that has happened. Yes. And sometimes we can point f fingers to countries, maybe in Afghanistan or whatever, mm. but yet in Fort Porto, if you are no, you know, if they suspected you that maybe you stole a cow, somebody will bring it fire, the other one will bring a matchbox, this one will bring firewood, and they will burn you. It has happened. Your Minister of Security, you know. Yes. So, and so and the uh, people who can look calm and okay, they are harboring anger, that and and uh, uh, as if we are on a, a dormant volcano. Yes, but uh, of course, I can tell you that criminality has gone up, especially since COVID-19. And that could have to something to do with the, of course, the, the uh, lack of necessity, necessity. So criminality has gone up, but that's not political. It has gone up across board. All the burglary, robbery, theft. It's an issue of poor governance. No, 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 no. But, but the reasons could be different. The, how about the debate? We, we, you, you have heard about the debate. About you, you are talking about people being jittery, people killing, like uh, in uh, Lira, when they they killed the person who had killed his wife, and uh, thrown the body in the septic tank. You remember? Reason. Some of the reasons, because justice is not given quickly. We have been talking about bail. People going in and being released. There are different reasons, but we are dealing with them. And uh, so, is so a, is a member so of parliament. So you are also a major supporter of, of, of jail with no bail? No. I, have, I, I am a lawyer, as you know. I, I know bail. But we are on what conditions and in what circumstances for which offenses that's the issue all right but uh, well that, that's a that's a whole uh, big issue if we have to get into it right now but we mm, could no, uh, yeah. honorable semuju don't you get a sense of people who seem to be always emotionally charged waiting for just small trigger because you have seen you know you you disturb a border border guy they gang on you and they kill you you're suspected of stealing something that could <coughs> happen in Fort Porto. Somebody will bring firewood, another one will bring uh, fuel, and then you'll be banned. <laughs> what has happened in, in Lira? You see, the trouble People when, when, seem when to be uh, angry. Mm, when you create conditions for something, like uh, Obote uh, rigged the 19, December 1980 elections, it is not DP that went to Uero and for the next five years made life very difficult in Uganda. Mm. It is these ones of UPM. They had lost the election squarely. <laughs> but they are the ones who took advantage who took advantage of the conditions in Uganda. Went to Uero, they were in Kampala wrecking havoc, throwing bombs. The throwing of bombs by is not limited to ADF. You need to read the uh, Chargonza's book. He said his group, the Black Bomba, was being called Akabomb Catalyst in his book, right written. His job, he says in his book, was to make sure people go to sleep at three. Read Pekos Kutesa, who at one time said he went to bomb a fuel depot in Namuong, Agip, that the only reason it did not export, there was no fuel. So the throwing of bombs, th bomb throwers keep on choosing each other, but it's the method you used yourself, robbing banks, invading uh, government institutions, making people go to sleep. So for you, you are able to win the war. Now you want to define how you should be fought. Whether ideological, that's why I said you must not create conditions. There are bad people who are going to take advantage. Like these bad people took advantage of the 1980 election. And for the next five years, Uganda was ungoverned. That's what you deal with as a country. You don't deal with the rebel group that keeps sprouting. Those ones, you'll finish one, another one will come. You'll finish Konya, there will be Rakwena, there will be Moses Ali, there will be this, there will be, including their own colleagues with whom they were in Ruero. Well. You, you, you overcome that by, I mean, you go in an election, you get beaten. A presidential candidate is beaten. Pekos Kutesa says the red, very good man. He says in his book, part of the reason he went to Ruero well to fight was that his, his friend, his 
mentor Yoel Museveni was arrested at, and made to sit at a road broker in Chireka. Where are the MPs? Segirinya is, in, is dying in Murago. Alan is in, in Chigo. The, the respect that you people wanted, other people wanted. You have a duty, especially you who are in Ruero. I, I don't I can't ask you to restore because you wrote a constitution and you have you, 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 you've been tearing it apart. Constitutionary. You, constitutionary. Is there anything like a, tearing a constitution apart constitutionary? Is it cast in stone? Why did you make it? It was amended. It's Why it's did you they make they it? Are amended. If it other person, are amended. If any other person will do it, all the exactly. indiscipline, the bad manners of Obote they have done. No, the only reason, the only reason, he didn't and, and I'm answering the point, the point you made, that this country may explode one day. The only time it hasn't happened is that they are ruling us on a gun point. Even when he speaks, we are, we are in control. It's not that they have spoken to everybody and the people are happy <laughs> that they have guns. So uh, next time you write, we'll be there to shoot at you, arrest you, and, and torment you. This country needs to dialogue out of this crisis. We, we have the same condition, or even worse. An election is like a war. On my nomination day, I, I, I was kidnapped by police and driven to the nomination center as a criminal. Why? They said they you took, had, they, they took you to get nominated. Yeah, they kidnapped me. I so had, and took you where? I had to look for documents. Took, I had, they took you where? And subsequently, all the elections, you, I mean, all the campaigns, you face tear gas, you face Chiboko, you have your <laughs> agents arrested, uh, public address system confiscated. This is the best and then gun he says, no, 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 they are. You're on the gun they point are, and you say what they you are, are no saying. condition. Even under, because in 1980. Can you be on the gun point and you say what you are saying here? Yes, on TV? There, there are people who will say it, even, when they, even when they are dying. You mean under, I mean, they are, you go and read about uh, Aziz Kasuja, what he told Ida Amin. And then eventually he went to jail. So which gun point are you on? <laughs> don't, take it, don't take it literally. Hey, what do you don't mean? Don't take it literally. Explain. You are in power because of force, not because of an election. That's the point I made. Are you in parliament because of force? There were people in parliament even under Obote. You were not elected? Even under Obote. You there there are areas where you are going to be overwhelmed. You mean you in your own election, haven't you been in court? You were not elected. Did you win because uh, a co the court system is fair? I won an election to be in the parliament. You were accused of stealing that election. That's why you were in court. No. I, I've never been uh, and what accused by anyone. What has court said? What, uh, what, the could, what else could the they have said? Right. Okay, stop so the therefore for me, the, so the, the, <laughs> po the point for me, right. Kamara, is that, uh, so I'm saying rubbish. Yes, wh what you are saying, that uh, I, w I did not win in court. It's, it's not, it's, I, I okay, I think I we're, we're digressing. I think yeah, we're yeah, yeah. I expect some decorum. No, you so don't have maybe decorum. I'm maybe I'm have expecting decorum. too much. No, 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 decorum. All right. Don't, 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 Let's have, you are, have uh, I am saying you were, you were in the court you for the first time. All right. I choose the one you, answer. Answer. You, you can ask him to keep quiet. You ask me you to the moderator. Then you keep All quiet and, you I, and I use the time that has Look been given me. to me. Oh. Gentlemen, can I have a break? Stand by, gentlemen, we are back on air. All right. Um, I'll be opening the line so that you two at home or wherever you are, you can be a part of this discussion. You're going to see the numbers on your line there. You pick your phone and uh, tell us what you think. It is okay to disagree, and that's the nature of our game, but it is not okay to disrespect each other. So if you're going to have a disagreement, that's fine, but uh, disagree with respect. So I'm taking the very first call online and tell us your name mm. and where you're from and keep it very short and simple. And if you have a question directed to any of my, my guests, please say so, so that they can be able to answer you directly. Have a call online. Hello? Hello? Yes, what's your name, sir? Hello? Hello? Yes, yes, sir, you're on air, what's your name? Okay, there's a problem. It's because you have Hello? tried. The, can you turn down, turn down the volume of your TV so that it doesn't send an echo here and to yourself? Then we shall have a better conversation. Oh, in, turn down the volume of again, this is, 
I think I'll never get tired of trying to advise. Please do not try to listen to yourself on your TV because that will confuse you and us to send an echo. Either you walk away or you turn down the volume of your TV. Then you'll hear. Hello? Hello? Yes, sir. What's your name? Do I have a problem with, it, with the lines today? I'm having comms challenges. I'm going to try again and then... Hello? 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 All right. Probably there is a problem here. And if it is here, my apologies. But just in case, if you always want to talk, you turn down the volume of your TV, then you won't have an echo here. Let me try Hello? it. Hello? Can you hear me? But I'm hearing my echo in your, on your own TV that you're watching. So it means you have left the volume high. We can't have a conversation with you, I'm told. So now, I'm closing the lines, unfortunately, because either a glitch or you haven't been able to do it right. So moving forward, um, we need institutions. I think you agree, like uh, the Honorable Semu Junganda said, robust, inst robust institutions, because those ones can go beyond individuals, the Honorable Jim Uwezi and anybody else or, or Semu Junganda, so long as the institutions are there. And, uh, but our institutions in Uganda seem to be wobbly. So that brings in a fear that moving forward, probably we have not immunized ourselves against what we see in other countries. They can actually happen today, tomorrow, any time, unless we have better institution, our security is not guaranteed. Mm -hmm. uh, which institution is wobbly? The democratic institutions. Oh. Yeah. Like? The, 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 the working of parliament that is robust, the judiciary that you think is going to do the job well so that people do not suspect there is mm -hmm. a, a mockery of justice and the governance, the Honorable Jim Owezi. Yeah, well, uh, these institutions, as you know, are being built. They are young. If you go into history, Uganda itself is young. And Uganda has a history of change of government. And when cha governments are changed, institutions are destroyed and they are built again. So I think it's a work in progress in building strong institutions. And in my view, I think although there are problems, but the problems are not destroying what is there, we need to improve, we need to build them. And I think over time, uh, we will be better as a country. You, I can talk about uh, an institution I, I know very well, the army. The army, the King's African Rifles, the Uganda Army, the Uganda National Liberation Army, all these were destroyed. So NRA came into power. Now we have built UPDF, which is the new constitution turned into UPDF, and it has been professionalized. And I think now it's a better army. Uh, uh, so that's an example of an institution which is growing, which is being built up, and which is professional. Even other institutions will be the same. You, you, you seem to suggest, Honorable Ibrahim, that the institutions we require, we don't have them, or they are not at the position where you can be guaranteed of security in the future. Even if we, for example, the NRM has uh, 40 years or 50 years, that anything could happen even after half a century unless the institutions are robust. You see, I had an opportunity um, to be engaged in a, a debate with the president and I told him, I told him when you captured power here, you were preaching Uganda. Now you became the main project. The institutionalization of individuals who think that this Uganda belongs to them. Go and read the UPDF Act. His name is there. Permanent. <laughs> Permanent, you, there are members of the, and, and it's not only him, but his colleagues, they are about uh, 15, 16. The high command. Including those who are dead. They are there as historical because we are creating institutions of UPDF as parliament. 
and they wrote their names there that they will be part of those institutions until they die. Maybe even the dead ones are still there. You have the historical the front member. of the front of generals. You, ha you have the historical <laughs> members of high and command. Have you read to me, Museveni, <laughs> Tinyefuza, Sare, Tumwine, Tadeo Kanyankore, who is dead? They actually Ruegema. move. They actually move. I will tell you. You, are not, you, you don't have monopoly. The, the no, book, no. The, the, the I am PDF agreeing with you that they yes. are not only 16, okay. we are over 40. Uh, uh, even if you are 100, but the point is, so. the moment you institutionalize the individuals, when you are speaking to General Jim, who is, he's going to look at himself from that angle, that's the frame from which he speaks to you as the owner whose name is in a UPDF Act. He is no ordinary UPDF soldier. The ordinary UPDF soldiers, including those who are now commanding the military, are not in the book. The ones who in retirement are in the book as permanent members. So until we've built institutions of the state, that's when we can speak about stability. And stability has nothing to do with how many years you are in power. Gaddafi was there 43 years, and because, oh, by the way, all strong men tend to build very strong armies. That's how you survive. The, I was in, 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 in Kaltuma, I saw Bashir when he was returning from South Africa where they wanted to arrest him. You would imagine that the whole country was behind him only to be chased like a chicken thief later. We need to build these institutions. That's why he's causing insecurity, the point we started with in DRC. That for 30 years, Mobutu Seseko was a banger, was building himself, he became the institution, he became Congo himself. And the day he collapsed, Congo collapsed. The point you made about Kampala here, because you, 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 you wield guns, we may fear. So you rule us because we are fearing, not because we love you. But you have guns. If I say something, you will kidnap me like you're kidnapping all our agents here in Kampala and taking them to unknown destinations. The very things that you condemned when you are going to fight. It is not late and will keep appealing to you. Don't be selfish. Don't go down with Uganda. You were, you were young. Now many of you are now elders. You are judges. You have a duty to bequeath a country that is governable, a country where people are not going for each other's throat. That opportunity still exists. Okay. Unfortunately, you're not grabbing the opportunity. You continue. All right. All right. Honorable on, on, Jimmy, why did you have to cast your name almost in stone in the PDF uh, the, the, uh, the everything. Including those who are, who are dead now. By the way, everything NRIM did or does is done legitimately and legally and constitutionally. It was the wisdom of the people who made the constitution, who made the law, who passed the law, and said that as we pass the button on over, it should be gradual, we should be there to guide the young people. Indeed, as he says, most of them have died now, and the number is not increasing, it is dwindling. But the young people are coming up. They have taken now over leadership of the army. They are the ones commanding it, although they are not in the book, but they are commanding. That's why we still have 10 people in our parliament, the army representatives, because it was the army that turned around this country and liberated it and, uh, you know, brought it to where it is. This was done legally. So uh, there is nothing wrong with what happened. So it's not correct to say that we are here, we are old, we usurped power, we did everything legally, constitutionally. And over time, the, 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 these people he's worried about who are in the constitution will not be there, and, but Uganda will be there the army will be there and the country will be stable. This was the reason and it's working and I think it was the, the right decision by those who made the law okay. to put our names there. Gentlemen, our time is out. Um, I'm going to ask each one of you to give us your parting shots. Let me begin with you, Honorable Ibrahim Nanda. The conflicts in Africa, they are there countries where you can go to run, go to Ghana, Nigeria is improving despite the problems, Senegal and others, countries in the south, Malawi, Zambia, 
Zimbabwe maybe is now running from the neighbors. The moment you institutionalize yourself, you turn a country into an enterprise that you will never leave. You will always set conditions that are going to force others into rebellion, uh, including stupid people. It is your duty to make everybody comfortable in Uganda. If you don't make them, they will disturb Uganda the way you disturbed it for five years, fighting to grab power. And eventually you grabbed it, throwing bombs in Kampala, attacking police stations and stealing guns. That's how rebels fight. Me, I am not a violent person. And I am not aspiring to be one. But for you, you have a history of being violent. You can condemn violence here because it is now being used against you. We have a duty to rid this country of violence. And you only do that by building democratic, believable institutions, make everybody comfortable that this is my country, I will die for it. My comment is that uh, the security of a country is not a partisan matter. It is a matter for everybody. Just like we provide security for everyone. And we therefore, we call, I call upon everyone, including people in opposition, not to encourage insecurity by condemning those who are providing it. And I think that uh, what happened by NRM is good. Some people may be too young, or maybe they read history lopsided. But where Uganda was and where Uganda is, is there is a lot of input by NRM. Everybody who gets arrested is arrested legally, is taken to courts of law. There is no state-inspired <coughs> violence, and we must keep on that one. But I call upon everybody to be vigilant, not to be uh, incited into violence, because we all need a stable country, and it's only when there is stability that we can have development. I thank you. Honorable Major General Jim Wezi, Minister for Security, thank you so much for your time. Honorable Ibrahim Samoni Uganda, MP for Kira Municipality, I want to thank all of you gentlemen for your time, but most importantly, for your insights. And uh, sometimes the guests on my show may look like maybe they, they are disagreeing. I think that is healthy because human beings can never always be in agreement. And what I see, even when they go into extreme of disagreements, I think it's the love for their country. Probably they just disagree on the models of apparently on how this country can be moved forward. Probably you disagree or agree on that, but it's okay. It is called debate. Good night and God bless you, God.